welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Once again, I had asked the council to help out a little more, a little better with getting documents up. Sue, uh, our city clerk, sort of has to organize all these documents, but we've got them in in time again, so I appreciate that very much. And welcome to the public and to the people watching us tonight. Before we start our meeting, I'll ask uh, Madam City Clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you, Mayor. Be more concerned with your character than with your reputation. Your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. Thank you very much. Call the 22nd regular council, common council meeting to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Berg. Here. Serta. Here. Davis. Here. Graf. Here. Hannah. Here. Kittleson. Here. Cleunis. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Ryan. Here. Susha. Here. Vanderweel. And Verhasselt, 16 present. Quorum is present. Now it's time to pledge our allegiance to the beautiful country we live in. Alderman Graf, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Gruff. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Burke. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the minutes be approved. Is that on the record? Motion and second to approve the minutes under discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mission, uh, minutes stand approved. Attorney McLean, confirmation of mayor's appointments. Thank you, Your Honor. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. David Gass to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Greg Wegeman, whose term expires 9-14-07, signed by the mayor. Ask for a motion to confirm. So motion and second to confirm. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. Public forum, Madam City Clerk. Yes, Christina Pape. And Christina, can I have your home address, please? Sure. Uh, my home address is 3005. Crusade Lane. That's Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54313. And you will have five minutes. Excellent, thank you. Um, hello, my name is Christina Pappy, and I am actually with Space Explorers. And the reason I'm here tonight is to request that we again submit a proposal that we've submitted in the past for an appropriations request from the city of Sheboygan. Um, the project is entitled the Wisconsin Advancement of Space Science, Education, and Technology. Um, just to give you a little bit of a background of what Space Explorers is, um, we are an organization located in De Pere, Wisconsin. And what we do is, for over the last 10 years, we've developed space simulations, lesson plans, um, curriculum, all geared towards preparing students for future careers in science, math, and technology. And so what we aim to do in this proposal is develop a new simulation um, based off of either a rocket plane simulation or a new futuristic NASA mission um, to further encourage students to pursue those careers. Um, the proposal also includes professional development for, for teachers within the 6th Congressional District um, and provides access to all of our programming and simulations as well. Um, many of you are probably familiar with the Sheboygan Science Center that's in the works. And Space Explorers actually has a signed letter of intent to work with the group. And so this proposal also calls for funding to help support that project. It's Space Experience Mission Control Center. So it's a wonderful opportunity for the city. Um, and it will continue to build upon our teachers and assist them with training and professional development as we prepare our youth. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Thank you. That would be us. Would it? Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is a hearing. 
for a change of zoning for property located at 1010 South 9th Street for Class UI Urban Industrial to Class CC Central Commercial Classification. Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there any? Please step up, sir. Can I have your name and address, please? David Rapinski, 835 Indiana Avenue, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Okay, thank you. Hi, I run the Dave Who's Inn. We really all know it's on 9th and Indiana Avenue. Um, with, the, with the proposed zoning change here, it, well, parking has always been an issue over on my end of the Indiana Avenue there, ever since they took it off of Indiana Avenue. Um, I used to supply parking for some of it. I left one of my papers at the thing. But the way it is now with, uh, with uh, commercial, it, it has the businesses that are there help with the parking, make sure that it's not a nuisance with outside businesses. And uh, by changing it to urban, it may change that where they would, they're, they're allowed a lot more ground rules, um, more land use area compared to green area and uh, things like that. I mean, in a lot of ways it'll help, but parking is still an issue. It really, ha it really is something that has to be addressed in my area. As a lot of you know, I've always supplied parking for my place. In fact, even now, I'm adding more parking to it and as I tear buildings down. Um, my business relies greatly on it and uh, I've been <coughs> probably in the last 15 years, probably in front of this council, I would say five times, I'm pretty sure five times, maybe six, always with parking issues. And uh, we've always addressed them at that time and come up with good things. I, for 15 years, leased uh, Bill Rice's property, maintained it, plowed it, cut the grass, and uh, groomed it, refilled it when it needed more gravel. And uh, in fact, there's a few Alderman here that I've seen that helped me in the past with some of these issues. And uh, now this last summer, it was given to the Highland House through a vote of the council, and uh, I think it's a good move also. Now with any of these places, they are supplying parking for their own people, but they want to be good neighbors also. But when it comes down to it, they are supplying parking for their own people. And I fear that in, whereas other big businesses or businesses that had parking for their people. Um, sometimes they get um, maybe a little discouraged with other people parking in their parking lots and chain them off. And uh, I know many of the people on Michigan Avenue relied heavily on trilling and trilling now blocks it off. And I remember they wanted to be a good neighbor for years they were. And I'm sure they had an excellent, excellent reason for doing it. And if these guys would block off their parking from us in the future, I'm sure they would have a very good reason to do it. I mean, it's theirs, they pay the taxes on it. Um, there is a number of businesses in, in my area that are very parking short. Uh, 9th Street, north of Indiana Avenue, along the Kepsel Building, has always been a rolling curb, which is allowed, there's about 270 feet there, I believe, of usable feet. We'll say that, we'll cut it down to 250 feet, 240 some feet of true usable space. There should be still about 30 cars on the angle parking that should be able to park there with the rolling curb as it had been. Um, since that has been closed up with the boardwalk um, project, they wanted to make that a walking area, which looks nice and all. It cuts us out of that parking that we needed that you gave to Highland House for their beautiful project that they have. And it's going to be a very nice project, well thought up, well designed. It looks it looks great. Um, I have an old building. I've done as much with it. I have uh, another old building next to it. I started, I kind of stopped right where I am. And uh, I had, well, I had all electrical done, new furnaces, all of that stuff, new roofs, insulated. And I stopped where it is in case I have to tear it down for parking. But that still doesn't mean that the businesses around me won't park by me. In my situation where you have a business that's very open to the public, if, 
if there's uh, if put it this way, if there's open sp parking spaces someplace, they'll use them. And if I close mine off, I'll create many bad feelings with a lot of the customers that I have in my area. <coughs> I've been in the tavern business now. I've been in it all my life. I've owned it for 20 years. I've run it for 22 years. I moved from 7th and Penn through eminent domain to the place I am now for the SDS people, which was another big company that came into this city, had a lot of good ideas and excellent intentions, but a lot of big companies go under. The Livesey Project took the other half of our neighborhood uh, customers, and uh, I think Livesey still owes the city money. Um, I've moved down to where I am now. I watched uh, Paul Flagg take over the tannery, sell off parcels of that. Uh, I've watched other big people come in. I've always been here is what I'm getting at. I've made it mentioned with the top ten taverns in this whole state. I'm one of the biggest bars in this whole state. You know, I'm a big corner bar. I got nine pool tables. Uh, I got miniature bowling alleys. I've got uh, a bunch of dark boards. It's just a fun place to come in. And with all the places growing up around me, it's a lot of fun. It was built in 18, about 1890, we'll say someplace right in there. And it comes down to the businesses that are around, a lot of old businesses, and there is some very easy fixes. There's parking that can be put behind some of the other buildings. I believe uh, Wisconsin Mutual Realty owns most of the land that's behind all of there now. But there is a couple of easy fixes, and I would ask that this be held over until March 19th, when the rest of his um, things that he has coming up. He's got, I believe, I think there's three more. Two, three, four. I think there's three more. Three have passed. I'm not sure if they're totally passed, but I know they've already been gone through, and there's three that have to be have to be done. And I would hope that this could be at least gone through again until March 19th, where it can be addressed with all of us. So, with that said. I want to say thank you very much for hearing me. <clears throat> thank you, David. One other small thing I want to add. Hey, I've seen this today. And as a business person, I like this. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Sir, please come up. <clears throat> Hi, and can I have your name and home address, sure. please? I'll better spell it. It's Miroslav, M-I-R-O-S-L-A-V, last name Anik, A-N-I-C. And your home address? 315 Ridgeway Street, Kohler, 53044. Okay, thank you. And for everyone's sake, I go by Mick. It's a lot easier than my real name. <laughs> um, Simply in rebuttal to uh, David's comments earlier, uh, the zoning changes that uh, I've requested for the uh, former Kepsel building are entirely consistent with every other property around that property. Every property, including David's property, is zoned central commercial. I don't see any reason why this one shouldn't be either. Secondly, with the amount of parking that the Highland House is offering, uh, will be making available to its customers. I'll be making available to my customers. And uh, David has available to the Dave's Who's In uh, because of the lots that he owns next door. I don't share his concerns about uh, parking problems. If anything, I think the parking issues will be improved uh, by the additional parking provided by both the Highland House and uh, my project. So, um, um, the only, uh, and the last comment is that the zoning changes that I'm requesting are not only consistent with all the properties around the property that Mutual Realty, my company, purchased, but is also entirely consistent with the uh, Harbor Center plan uh, prepared by Vandewall and Associates and I believe approved by this august body. So uh, there really is no reason that I can see why we don't go ahead so I can go ahead and start uh, doing work <clears throat> on this project and improving what is now an eyesore to the city and making it a 
uh, property tax paying uh, customer attractive uh, uh, venue uh, at a very critical intersection in our fair city. So uh, with that, I recommend uh, request that uh, you go ahead and uh, vote affirmatively on this zoning change application. Thank you. Any questions? No, no questions. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? There being none, President Burke. Yes, sir. thank you, Your Honor. I move that the hearings be closed. Second. Motion and second. The hearings be closed. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearing is closed. Consent agenda 21 1 through 22 27. President Burke. Yes, thank you again, Your Honor. I move to accept, uh, approve and file all the ROs, accept and adopt all the RCs, and place the general ordinances upon their passage. Okay. Motion and second under discussion. Alderman Van der Wiel. Thank you, Your Honor. I would request that we uh, refer 22 26 back to uh, Public Works. 2226 back to Public Works? Yes, please. Okay, that will be referred back to 2226 back to Public Works. Anything else? There being none, please call the roll. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clay Eunice? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Susha, Vanderweel, Verhasselt, and Boren. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 2228 through 2230 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 2231 by the city clerk submitting a memo from the mayor submitting comments made by neighbors at the city plan commission on February 13th regarding the rezone of the property located at the terminus of North Taylor Drive from class SR5 Suburban residential to MR8, mixed residential 8. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Sorry. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and file the report of officer. Second. Motion second to, to file. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2232 by the City Plan Commission. Recommending changing the use district classification of property located at the terminus of North Taylor Drive from Class SR5 Suburban Residential 5 to MR8 Mixed Residential 8 classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this, of course, is a, a, a very difficult decision for the people that live on North Taylor. Uh, we try to take everybody into account. And it's very important to the residents of North Taylor that uh, if, if Mr. Gottsucker goes forward with the condominium project, that he stay on the plan that was submitted, uh, that we want to make every effort that landscaping can be done to protect the integrity of that neighborhood. Um, you know, everybody, most of the people I talk to wish it could stay the way it is. But given the fact that as it stays now, it could become single family homes, um, most of them have said that it's, it's best that we move ahead with the condo project uh, on, a, on a high end. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Anybody else? <clears throat> there being none, please call the roll. Serta. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, no. Manny, Aye. Meyer, no. <clears throat> Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. and Berg. Aye. 14 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. 22.33 to 20, through 22.41 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 2242 by Alvin Grupp. I got a light on. I'm sorry, the what? Last one. There's a light on. 
I'm sorry, what? You have a light on your board. Alma Serta, uh, Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, 2240, would that, is that okay if that could be referred also to PPNS? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. You, you had pointed that out earlier. 2240 uh, is indicated there will be referred to finance and also now to public protection and safety. Please make that notation. Thank you, Vice President Serta. My apologies. Resolutions introduced three. 2242 by Alderman Graf, Hannah, Boren, Clayunas, and Susha, authorizing to purchase an agent to solicit proposals for the Bond Council legal services for all general obligation debt issued by the city during the period from June 1st, 07 to May 31st, 09. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. If there be a none, please call the roll. Davis. Aye. Graf. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. and Serta. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2243 and 2244 lies over. 2245 and 2246 to be referred. Report of Committee 7, 2247, by law and licensing, recommending denying taxicab driver's license number 7349 based on the applicant's apparent withdrawal of his application, his failure to reveal all violations on his application, and his non-appearance before the committee. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt. Under discussion. Under discussion is Edgardo Gonzalez Cordona here this evening. Not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Redke. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Davis? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2248 and 2249. To be referred. Report of committee nine. So, do you want to do that? Hold that. Mm -hmm. Twenty-two fifty will be held. Is be, will be hold, held for twenty-two fifty-seven. Please make that notation. Ordinance is introduced 10 51 by Alderman Radke, repealing various ordinances and creating sections of the municipal code relating to property exteriors and graffiti abatement. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move for suspension of the rules. There's a motion second to suspend the rules. Is there any objection? There is none. Please proceed. Then I would uh, make a motion that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put 2251 upon its passage under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Under discussion, this is just simply a, a cleanup of a clerical error that happened with the municipal code. Um, some things were deleted that shouldn't have been. We're just putting this back in so we can get things back in order for a couple of departments to use these ordinances on a regular basis. Very good. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ratke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Born? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? <clears throat> Excuse me, and Graf. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2252 lies over. Matters laid over 11, 21, 45, and RO. RO number 483-0607 by the City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning of property located at 1010 South 9th Street from Class UI Urban Industrial to Class CC Central Commercial Classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There be a nut. President Byrd. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, Your Honor. I think uh, given the hearing results, I would be interested in hearing from our planning department. Very well. Regarding what the changes might specifically entail. Very well, President Byrd. Uh, we, uh, I need a... I need a motion to open the floor. Um, Mr. Sokolowski is not a, uh, a department head. Is there a second to that move? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Motion carries. You have the floor. Um, what we have tonight is um, a mixed-use proposal that will eventually come. Obviously, the Kepsa building was a plumbing warehouse, so it was zoned urban industrial with uh, a lot of the other factories that are presently located in that area. It's been sitting vacant for some time. We have a great opportunity of someone looking to come in and do a mixed-use development with this building that's vacant right now in order to do the types of things he's after. He's looking at a mixed-use type of uh, zoning, which is exactly it, consistent with everything else is along there with the taverns, the retail, the restaurants, and it's really just kind of jumping from the south pier and continuing moving along the river and continuing on up the river. So it's exactly what we're hopeful for. Um, as was stated by Mr. Anik, um, it, it's uh, compliant with our comprehensive plan. And one of the things that we just finished off is our harbor, <coughs> harbor master plan phase three, harbor center master plan phase three. And it was exactly what it was after, it was to reuse this historic building in a mixed use fashion. And staff strongly recommends approval of the proposal. Thank you. Sokolowski? Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. <clears throat> 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2168, resolution number 2340607 by Alderman Graf, Hannah, Clayuna, Susha, and Boren authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 07 budget. Alderman Graf, would you like to take 69 and 68? Yes, Your Honor, I will. Um, I would move that the resolutions uh, 2168 and 2169, that both resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ratke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Warren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? I'm sorry, Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2176, General Ordinance Number 750607 by Alderman Vanderweel. Serda, Berg, Montemayor, and Meyer relating to the no parking zones on School Avenue so as to delete the no parking standing stopping school day 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. buses only zone along the north side of School Avenue. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to take 2177 with that. Please do. And I will move to put those general ordinances upon their passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Being none, please call the roll. <clears throat> Manny. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Ann Clayunas. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law. All among, oh, oh, not yet. Oh. Getting a little ahead of me here. Other matters authorized by law 2253 and RO by the City Plan Commission recommending repealing and recreating sections of the historic preservation regulations of the city's zoning code relating to the rights of property owners relating to the designation of historic structures, sites, and districts and passing the attached substitute revised ordinance. Alma Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the ROs and pass the revised ordinance. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, more of a, a question here. We have two uh, versions of the historic uh, uh, preservation ordinance here. Uh, if I can refer to Attorney McLean, are these identical now? Uh, document 2253 and 2254 are, are identical. They are identical now. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Barn. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I just want to reiterate that I'm, from the last meeting, that I'm glad to see that these documents now reflect uh, the rights of the property owner. As I discussed at the last meeting, I think it's very important that the property owners have a say both in a historic structure and also uh, in a historic district. I think that's very important. Thank you. 
In this instance, I would ask, uh, I would generally ask Alderman Ryan, since he is a member of the Historic Preservation Committee, to act on 2254. If that's permissible, would Alderman Montemayor like to include both, yes. being that they're the same? Is that okay with you? Okay, so the motion would be to, to accept and file 2253-2254 and uh, put the substitute revised ordinances upon their passage. Clear? Any further discussion? <clears throat> there being none, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2255 and RC by salary and grievances recommend in filing documents relating to deleting the position of network specialist in the finance information systems table of organization and adding the position of mayoral technology advisor in the mayor's office TO. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to. Uh, uh, comment that at the request of our finance director, Rich Gephardt, we are going to leave the network specialist position as is. Thank you. Okay. So be accepted and up and file then. Yes. Under any further discussion? We did get a second to that, didn't we? Um, Alderman Graf seconded it. Alderman Graf, okay. Any further discussion? There be none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2256, an RC by salaries and grievances, recommended filing documents submitting a communication from Alderman Boren relating to a state pension funds article and asking questions regarding the city's possible shortfall for pension and health care retirement benefits for city employees and retirees. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted to file. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> 2257, an RC by salary and grievances recommending prohibiting elected officials from seeking or accepting employment with the city within two years after leaving the elected office and passing the attached substitute ordinance. And that uh, we, uh, we need an action on 2257, an action on 2250. Alderman Hanna. Oh. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Hold on. Would you like to take that or Alderman Susha? Um, thank you. I would like to um, have 2250 and 2257 referred back to salary and grievance. Second. Making a motion. Motion okay. and second to refer back. Yes. Anybody object to that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion. <clears throat> this is to refer. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. No. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. No. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. And Meyer. Aye. 14 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Is there anyone, lights were on, anybody that would like to say anything at the moment? Like turn off lights? Okay. 2258, Alderman Cleunas. Okay. 2258, a resolution by Alderman Cleunas, Montemayor, Kittleson, Manny, accepting the agreement with the local 2039, ask me for 2007, 2009, and authorizing the collective bargaining committee and the chairman of the committee on salary and grievances to sign the agreement. Alderman Cleunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that Resolution 2258 be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in looking over these documents and these contracts, I noticed that this one for uh, AFSCME was the only one of the bargaining units that did not agree to go up to paying 8% of their health insurance premiums after, I'm, did I say 8%? I meant that did not agree to go up to 10% at the end of the contract, and the other ones did. I was wondering if anybody, uh, without giving any privileged information, could tell me why 
this was the only union that didn't agree to go up to 10% after three years. Yes, Alderman Boren, uh, the, uh, that would be the union that uh, represents the Department of Public Works, and that was one of the first unions that was bargained with, and it was bargained in good faith, and before, they, uh, before them, there had been no other negotiations. They agreed to eight. Could they have agreed to ten? Perhaps they didn't. They were the first one to act on it. The other unions came back and acted on ten. Um, I would ask that whatever they bargained in good faith and with the uh, salary and grievance and our director of human resources be, uh, be honored, although they did not agree to 10. Thank you. Other, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I want to thank the Public Works Union for working with the city to reach this agreement in such a timely fashion. I also want to thank Ed Surik for inviting the Salary and Grievance Committee in to observe most of the negotiations. As chairperson of Salary and Grievance, I was honored to be able to see how professional everyone conducted themselves during these meetings. A lot of times when you think of negotiations, you think of um, a lot of words flying back and forth and things flying throughout the room, and it was very professional, and I really appreciate everyone's cooperation. I also want to extend a very special thank you to Alderpersons Kittleson and Montemeyer for taking so much of their personal time to attend almost every bargaining session for each union. Um, just to recap, uh, for the people at home in regards to what's, what's in this contract, um, they're all pretty much the same with the exception of what Alderman Bourne pointed out. Um, the contracts are three years in length. Um, right now the city uses primarily the PHN network, but now um, people who are enrolled in the PHN network can also utilize the Aurora Quick Care with no out-of-pocket cost. This is really a win-win situation for both the employees and the taxpayers. The Quick Care provides a licensed nurse practitioner. Um, they have a location on the south side and a location on the north side. I know that the south side hours are really long. They're Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Sunday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. They see um, only uh, common ailments such as strep throat, ear infection, pink eye, UTIs, seasonal allergies, mono, and contact dermatitis. Uh, that it's not a place to go if you have something more serious than any of the things I mentioned above. But what's really nice is that if you have a child on a Saturday afternoon at 6 p.m. with an ear infection, you now have a place to take them at no cost to the employee instead of going to the emergency room. So hopefully by utilizing quick care, we're going to see the use of the emergency room reduced, and that's going to just be a win-win for everybody involved. Um, the prescription drug copay will increase uh, to $10 for generic or for brand name drugs where no generic is available, and $20 for brand name drugs where generics are available. Um, and then the employees shall pay a $50 copay for emergency room services, and uh, that will be waived if the employee is admitted. Um, in regards to the wage increases, January 1st, 2007, uh, there would be a 3% increase. January 1st, 2008 would be a three and a quarter. And then in 09, it's going to be a split raise. Um, January 1st would be 2%. July 1st would be 1.5%. A couple of months ago, we talked about the quid pro quo. If uh, an employee is contributing 3% more towards their health insurance, that's pretty much equivalent to a 1% pay increase. And in the long run, it's going to be very good to get the employees contributing more to their health plan. In the long run, that's going to be so much better for the taxpayers because the rate of insurance is escalating much faster um, than what a pay increase would. Um, as far as uh, the changes with their uh, contribution to the health insurance, effective February 1st of 07, uh, the DPW contract is going to double what they're currently paying. Currently, the employees are paying 2.5%, and it's going up to 5%. January 1st, 2008, their contribution will go up to 7%. And January 1st, 2009, their contribution will be going up to 8%. Um, now, I think compromise is important, but when it comes to spending the taxpayers' money on employee health insurance, I need to stand by my convictions and preserve my character and vote against the DPW contract. I will be supporting the other contracts that the employees are contributing 10% towards their health insurance by 2009, but I, I cannot support a contract with employees only contributing 8%. Thank you. Thank you. President Burke? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'm I think I would mirror uh, the concern that older person Susha had uh, just expressed regarding the settlement at 8%. I guess I would 
uh, given that this is a bargained issue and given that an appeal would be solved to mediation and arbitration, I would uh, have a question of our HR director if he could perhaps address them regarding the, uh, the posture that we would take in an arbitration of a matter like this. Okay, Alan Berg. Uh, Mr. Sarek, would you please step up? <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I guess I would, uh, as HR director, I would lean towards the uh, decision of the Salary Grievance Committee and whether they'd recommend to, to go to uh, uh, mediation or arbitration. The next step probably would be mediation. I think <clears throat> comparing the contracts, they're economically basically the same. Uh, it depends on your, on your perspective as to whether um, wages are more important than contributions, and, and it's kind of, a, I hate to say, a horse apiece, but... Uh, that's kind of where we are with it now, but uh, uh, I do agree with the mayor. The, the first contract to settle was uh, public works at an 8% level for premium chair. That's at, at the end of the second year, by the way. And the other contracts were at 10% at the end of the second year of the contract. So. President Berg, you have a question? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, given the situation where you have, uh, tonight if we ratify the three contracts at 10%, that would then serve, would that be a significant precedent for the arbitrator where the city via other unions have settled at 10%? So in other words, if we were to uh, not approve the public works contract, send it back to be reopened by salary and grievance, uh, and we did approve the three contracts that we have with the 10% copay, uh, I guess I would value your opinion on how an arbitrator would look at that were we to, again, remain at a stale, at stalemate with an 8% level for one contract and perhaps a 10% level for the rest of the contracts with the city. Well, arbitration in, in the public sector is a little different <coughs> than in the private sector. In the public sector, the arbitrator has certain guidelines to follow and uh, which are the most important or valued items within whichever the, the final offer of the city might be as opposed to the offer that the union might be. But uh, uh, one of the most, I'd say, highly considered decisions and part or uh, ideas and part of the arbitrary would be internal comparisons. And if if majority of the employees were at 10 percent level at a higher level, I, I, I can't say exactly what would happen, but it would be a, a strong consideration. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Cleunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I just would like to point out in the DPW contract um, that in effective January 1st, 2009, they're only receiving a 2% increase in wages. And that is, um, that is also a benefit to the city as well. Their wages are going to be lower and in increasing than the other departments, um, which is an advantage to the city as well. Mm -hmm. So I just consider that as well. There's a... Uh, there's a bigger picture here. <clears throat> I was present during that negotiation with the, uh, the ASME, and 8% folks was groundbreaking. We hadn't heard about 10% yet, and that was done in good faith, fair bargaining. To destroy our, to damage, I should say, our new relationship with the unions, it's not good for that 2%, considering that they're only going to get a 2% increase, as Alderman Cleveland says. We can play games. Anybody can play games. What we're looking at, we need to start developing trust between this council, between its committees, and our union members. If we start playing games now, I don't think that, in my mind, that would be fair dealing. Now, you can do what you want tonight, but I would strongly urge that we just pass and approve all these contracts as they've been bargained for in really good faith. Alderman, once in my office. Oh. Thank you, Your Honor. You've pretty much said what I was uh, thinking also. They bargained in good faith. We bargained in good faith. And as Alderman Clayuna said, they are not getting the, as large a wage increase as the other unions. Thank you. Alderman. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, rising health care costs is, is just a given in today's society, and I think these agreements are reflective of a, of a strong relationship between the council and the various unions in the city, and I would support them. 
There's another, there's another factor here <clears throat> that you, I would ask you to please consider. We're looking at a three-year agreement. We took a risk, they took a risk. But it allows us to plan. In the past, every year, every year, we didn't know what we were up against. It could have gone to arbitration, to mediation. It could go gone anywhere we wanted to go. We need to establish some structure. And the only way we can establish some structure is to negotiate in good faith a three-year contract, which we've done. Granted, 10% would be better, but we did groundbreaking at eight. And it allows us to plan, allows you to plan. We still have to figure out where we're going to get the money from, but it allows us to plan. Alderman Ryan, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, seeing as the uh, uh, DPW, AFSC, I mean, were the first to negotiate, and they, you know, settled at the the eight percent and a smaller pay raise. It uh, does not make uh, any sense to me whatsoever to to reject this at this point. I think we should approve it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Anybody else? Okay, we will <clears throat> call the roll on 2258 with the Ask Me for 2007-2009 contract. Please call the roll. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? No. Berg? No. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Meyer aye. and Montemayor. Aye. 13 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 2259, a resolution by Alderman Susha, Clayunas, Montemayor, Kittleson, and Manny accepting the agreement with the Professional Police Officers Supervisory Association for 07 and 09 and authorizing the Collective Bargaining Committee and the Chairman of the Committee on Salaries and Grievances to sign the agreement. We have 59, 60, and 61 pretty much mirroring it themselves. You'd like to take all three of them, Alderman Susha? Please do. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that these three resolutions be put upon their passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. Thank you. I just wanted to also extend my thanks to the police supervisors, um, the firemen, and also the police officers. Um, I appreciated their professionalism during the negotiations and their cooperation. Um, this is really a landmark. First of all, a lot of time went into uh, getting the negotiations approved. But if you remember the last times we negotiated with the, the unions, this went on for approximately 17 months. We just settled in the middle of 2006, and that was a two-year contract. So this is, this is wonderful that we are able to wrap things up in the first six weeks of the year. So I, I'm very pleased uh, for that, and I'm very appreciative to everybody's cooperation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, please call the roll. Okay, we've got Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Are you going to be voting on all three? Yes. May I? May we take a separate vote on 2260, please? I will need to abstain. Uh, what on number? 2260. 2260. You would like a separate vote, then we will call a vote on 2259 and 2261. Thank you. Everybody got that? Okay, please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg, Serta, Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clionis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. and Radke. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 2260. You want to reiterate your motion there, Almasusha? I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Any discussion? Being on, please call the roll. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Montemayor, Racky, and Ryan. Aye. 15 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. 2262 lies over. 2263 lies over. 2264 will be referred to City Plan Commission. 2265 will be referred to Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee. 2266 and 67 lies over. Other matters? Attorney McLean. 2268 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2007 and June 30, 2008. That will be referred to Law and Licensing. 2269. 
is an RO by the city clerk submitting a summons and complaint in the manner of uh, EMC Mortgage Corp versus the city of Sheboygan et al. That will be referred to risk management. 2270 is an RO by the city clerk submitting yeah. all the person for hassles. Wisconsin Police Station Analysis Summary. That will go to City, County, Shared Services, and Building Use. 2271 is a communication from Keith Potter questioning issues with debt owed to the Wisconsin Retirement System. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 2272 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Alderperson Verhassel stating that a number of his constituents have stated their concerns about the inconsistent sidewalks of Erie Avenue on Erie Avenue between Memorial Mall and the Riverview Apartments. And that will be referred to Public Works. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned.